uh, capabilities that the machine has. Um, that way in case, you know, with the whole COVID thing going on, you're getting into sewing, um, you're thinking about getting a sewing machine, and you want to know what kind of features to look for. Maybe you have an old sewing machine that you haven't used in a while, and you need a little bit of a refresher. Um, you know, if you're using somebody else's sewing machine, um, I just thought I might go over some features that my particular one has. Um, I have a Janome Skyline S9, so that's the make and the model. Um, it does do sewing and in machine embroidery, uh, but I mostly use it for quilting myself. Uh, right now, I do have the screen off because I didn't want to have to, because it does like a weird speckled D kind of thing um, on my camera because I don't have a professional camera. Um, so, all right, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, you know, your basic physical features are gonna be, you know, right here on the right hand side, we do have what's called the hand wheel. Uh, this is what turns. And then as you can see here, the needle moves up and down when you turn the hand wheel. Uh, here you just have a lid. Uh, this up here is gonna give you a list out of all the stitches available on this machine. Not every sewing machine has this, especially ones that have color touch screens because a lot of times they'll have so many that they can't fit them on a cover. Um, so if you have a more top of the line machine with even more stitches, you probably won't have anything listed out on the cover um, if you do have a cover. Um, do, uh, although you should check your instruction manual if there's a quick reference chart. Oftentimes new sewing machines will list out their stitches in an instruction manual of some sort uh, in case this is a little too small for you to read or if you you know you just like to make notes and things like that uh, up in here as well we do have the bobbin winder so this is where we wind our bobbin on a newer machine you usually just have to click it over um, on some machines you have to click over the bobbin winder and pull out the hand wheel at the same time uh, we do have our thread, our spool pin right here. It is a horizontal spool pin, um, and then a lot of sewing machines will come with like a little, little separate pin so that you could have a vertical spool pin if you have like a bigger spool or something like that. Uh, so on this particular machine, if I were to wind a bobbin, I set my thread here. I follow the lines. I come over here and um, I would wind my bobbin. I am gonna make another video that goes more in depth about this particular model, how to you know, change the needle, wind a bobbin, all that good stuff. Um, so there's the cover, that's where our thread sits. Um, on a lot of Janome sewing machines, you can actually open the left hand side as well, so that way you can keep it clean and everything like that. Um, be very careful if your sewing machine has this feature on it. You don't want to knock any of the wires or anything like that that are in there. Um, so really all I do is I take a little dusting brush. Let me grab that for you. So like a little dusting brush and then I usually just come here on the cover and dust it out. Um, and then, you know, if maybe your thread gets wrapped up here, this gives you an opportunity to clean that out really well. Okay. Um, other physical features on the machine, uh, you know, our press, our foot control lift is going to be a little handle on the backhand side. And then I have a needle threader here, my needle plate, and then there's an accessory tray that pulls out as well. Um, I bought my machine used, so it does has some pieces missing. So normally on these machines, you have a little tray that sits in here where all your little presser feet go and that pulls out. And then you just have some of your storage. I just try to keep things that I use most often. Um, What's nice about my particular machine too is that it does come with a second stitch plate. So this is a straight stitch needle plate. So anytime you see a needle plate for a sewing machine that has just a single opening in the center here, that means it's a straight stitch needle plate. And basically what that does is, let me put this back on. So what a straight stitch needle plate does is it creates a single opening for the needle to go into. And, what, and so if you're working with fabric that can easily get chewed up in your regular stitch plate, this stitch, straight stitch plate helps prevent that. Um, it, it's, it's akin to like their older style sewing machines and things like that. Um, this is a drop, drop in bobbin or top loading bobbin. And you can tell that because you can physically see the bobbin right here in the needle plate. 
Um, these tend to be the class 15 plastic bobbins. And what's the benefit to having a drop-in bobbin is that it's quick and it's easy to change it. And then two, if your machine doesn't have a, a um, bobbin sensor to tell you when you're running out of thread, it's nice because you can just like pull your fabric up and kind of peek underneath there and see when you're running out of bobbin thread. Whereas a traditional front-loading bobbin, you basically just have to run out of bobbin thread and hope for the best. Okay, so that's some of the physical features of the machine. You can see this is a much bigger, uh, slightly bigger machine. It has a nice work area here and it's nice and deep here too. Um, it does have an embroidery arm that kind of just slides onto the back of the machine here if I was wanting to do machine embroidery, um, but that is a separate piece. Okay, um, some of the buttons here. I'm gonna keep the screen off, like I said, otherwise it gets all staticky looking. Um, so some of the buttons here, here's a home button. Um, this shows a picture of the sewing machine and the sewing machine with a hoop underneath the needle, which means that's the way that I can switch it from machine embroidery uh, to regular sewing. So if you ever see a sewing machine that has a button like that, um, or you know if you touch the screen on a sewing machine and it brings up a, a prompt for sewing or embroidery, that means that it's a combination sewing machine. Um, you know, here's a folder. Anytime you see a folder icon, that means that you have memory built into the machine. A lot of computerized machines will have some sort of memory capabilities, meaning you can set a stitch to a certain length or width and save that to recall it later. Uh, you can do lettering, so you can spell out names and words and things like that. And then you could save it to a folder and recall that at any time. On an embroidery machine, obviously you can save your embroidery patterns as, you, as you've edited them. Um, this one is nice and clear, it says set settings, so it has a little wrench. Sometimes you'll see gears um, for your settings page, usually it's a wrench. Um, on some other brands, I know that it's like a piece of paper with a dog ear on the corner and that's, their, that's that settings page. Um, so unfortunately settings is not a universal icon Folders are, folders tend to be very universal. Um, the little house icon, that's a very universal icon. But settings uh, definitely varies company to company, which is funny, I think. Um, this has a question mark button. So if there's something on my screen, maybe there's a particular stitch that I'm not sure what that does, I can hit the question mark button and my machine will uh, prompt me with an answer. Um, not very many machines have something like that built into it, even a, computer, even a computerized machine. Um, the last icon here is a little key, so that's a lock button. Um, so if I had my machine on and I needed to change my needle, what I can do is hit the lock button and it'll prevent my machine from doing anything. It means the motor won't run, the needle won't go up and down, and it's just to help prevent injury or damage to your sewing machine. Okay, so that's the screen there. Um, I will turn it on after we go over this stuff. Right here we have, um, anytime you see a slider like this, you can see one triangle, two triangles, three triangles. This is a speed setting. So what this does is, you know, when I'm using my foot control um, or my gas pedal, as I like to call it, uh, you know, sometimes we can go a little overboard or, you know, sometimes it can be difficult to gauge how far down you need to push your foot or even if you're using like a start stop button on your machine, what this does is that it means that the machine will never go any faster than this setting. Uh, so you still have some gauge, you still have a range, especially if you're using the foot control. But what's nice is that you can set it super duper slow and it'll just take a stitch at a time, um, which is nice sometimes when you're working on something more fiddly or more delicate fabric, being able to set your speed at a lower setting um, cause for me in particular, I'm usually over here. <laughs> I usually go pretty fast. So, um, if I'm doing quilting, I'll set it in the middle. Um, so it is a really nice feature to have, especially if you're new to sewing, you know, you're a little intimidated by machines. Having a speed control on there, um, is really beneficial cause you can just set the speed and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, this is also really good for young sewers for, so for kids getting into sewing, being able to set a nice slow speed uh, on the machine is really nice. Uh, the next button here is a scissors button. Uh, this is a very universal icon as well. This is a thread cutter option. And so what it does is I, you know, I've sewn my seam, I've sewn my stitch, and I'm done. Um, all I have to do is hit the scissors button, and what it'll do is take the needle down, takes the needle down, and then cuts the thread in the 
bobbin area. There's a little cutter that swings out and then cuts your thread. This is really nice because you don't have to take your fabric, pull it all the way over to the side, and then cut it with the manual cutter or even with a pair of scissors. So this is gonna save you thread over time. It doesn't seem like it's much at first, but if you've ever worked on a machine where you had to cut your own thread, um, it's gonna save you six inches every time that you would have had to cut your thread. Uh, so that is a really nice option. On this particular machine and on a lot of other machines with a lock stitch option, um, what it will do is you can set your thread cutter to go needle up and down in the same place um, so that it creates a knot, it's almost like if you, as if you were hand sewing, create a knot and then cut the thread for you, which is really nice because um, sometimes you don't want to hit reverse, right? Sometimes you're working with a silky fabric or you know you're afraid your fabric's gonna get chewed up. Um, so being able to set that thread cutter to do some other things is really beneficial. Um, this right here, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's like, it looks like a little presser foot with an arrow up and down. That's a presser foot up and down button. Um, so this has both a manual uh, presser foot up and down lever as and then an automatic one. So what's really nice about that, having a feature like that on a sewing machine means that I can set my sewing machine to stop needle down, raise the presser foot up, either the machine will do it automatically for me or I can just hit a button and do it and it allows me to pivot my fabric really easily. Um, so that's kind of nice. It's just right there instead of having to reach back here all the time. Um, on this machine, we have a little arrow up and down button. That's a needle up and down. Uh, this is not quite as universal as, say, like the thread cutter or the speed slider. Um, sometimes you'll see a picture of a needle with an arrow up and down next to it, and it's just the same thing. It's a needle up down feature. So if you need to just raise your needle up and you don't want to have to swing through the whole hand wheel doing this as much. This is actually better for your sewing and everything. It helps prevent your thread from getting tangled and stuff like that if you're using that. Um, this little target button here is a lock stitch. Again, it'll go on the Janome, it goes needle up and down four times in a row. A lot of other brands just do once. And then what's also nice about this button is it's a pattern in button on a Janome. So say I was stitching out a little flower design and I wanted, and I was halfway through the flower and I just wanted the machine to stop once it was done with the flower that it's on. All I have to do is hit this button here and it'll finish it off and you're good to go. Um, there's a lot of other brands that will use the target symbol for a lock stitch and it will also be like a pattern end. Um, there are some brands out there that I know of that instead of having a target, it's a basically like, um, it looks like a triangle that was cut in half and then like a dot, dot, dot. And so that would be their pattern end on those particular machines. Um, here we have what looks like a little umbrella or U-turn, oh, that's your reverse. So if you hit it once, it'll just sew backwards once. If you press and hold it while you're sewing, your sewing machine will sew backwards until you release that. Uh, that's, I think every single sewing machine made in the last 30 years has that. I mean, even older sewing machines have a reverse. It's usually a lever that you pull back. Um, so reverse is really nice. That's what we used to use for our lock stitching. On a lot of bag making um, projects, garment sewing projects, you'll need to use a reverse to kind of lock the stitch in much more effectively than just a lock stitch. Um, it's really gonna depend on the fabric, uh, how fiddly it is, what foot you're using, what thread and everything like that. So you have both options on a machine like this, which is really nice. Um, here we have a start stop button. So if physically using a foot control is difficult for you, or you wanna be able to have kind of both hands on your project, um, being able to start and stop with a button right here is really nice. Um, and then again, using your speed control, you can set it to go slow or medium, and then hit your start stop button. Um, so I just kind of wanted to go over some of these features on a sewing machine. Um, again, a lot of these icons or a lot of these features are universal to many different brands of sewing machines. So you have to ask yourself, what kinds of things do you like um, to use when you're sewing? What things do you think will be beneficial for you as a maybe a new sewer or someone getting back into sewing? Um, so those are some key things to look out for. Um, really the biggest thing on this machine is the space. There's a lot of space here to work with. 
Um, and for me, I do like having speed control thread cutter, the needle threader, and then I like Janome's walking foot. They call it an AccuFeed foot, and I think I like theirs. It comes with this machine. Um, so that is something to look for too when you're buying the machine. What does it come with already? New in a box, how much extra stuff are you gonna have to buy for this machine to be able to set it up for your kind of sewing? Alrighty guys, so that's all I have for this video. I'm gonna make a few more about the Janome Skyline S9 in particular. I'll probably take you into the screen here and show you some of the other advanced features that this machine has. But you know, if you're looking at a sewing machine, you're looking to buy a new sewing machine, and you have any questions about it, or questions about maybe features that it might have, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below and I will see you next time.